We have been passing through the heat of examinations all these days. Now a shower of results has come. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, the weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. SSLC results published. Verdict final for Kwaza, the Mumbai terror convict. Good luck, United sworn in as Nigeria's new president. In the rising China, sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis also on the rise. UK sent for hung parliament with Tories' largest party. Hundreds injured in cane charging by police near Kinalo, Calicut. Now, the news in detail. The secondary school leaving certificate examinations, SSLC, results published. 90.72 of the students who have appeared passed out. It's slightly lower when compared to the previous years. 92.09 of the students passed in 2008, and it's a record. In 2009, it was 91.92%. A total of 4,50,000 students have appeared this year. 4,8,226 got qualified for entry to higher courses. 2,8,824, more than half are girls. Greek Parliament votes in favor of austerity measures. Greece Parliament have voted in favor of the hefty cuts and reforms proposed by the government to address the country's financial crisis. With the 172 of 300 votes in favor, one report said a second vote would have to be passed for the bill to become law. The vote comes a day after three bank workers died in a petrol bomb attack as demonstrations over the planned austerity measures turned violent. The finance minister said the measures were the only way to avoid bankruptcy. But as the vote was held, demonstrators gathered outside the parliament to protest against the measures. Wednesday's deaths have shocked many in Greece. Bank workers have gone on strike in anger of the loss of their colleagues. Nigeria's good luck Yonatan sworn in as president. Nigeria's acting president, Gurlak Yonatan, has sworn in as a head of the state following the death of President Umaru Yar Adwa after a long illness. Mr. Yonatan, in charge of since February, will appoint a deputy and serve out the rest of the current presidential term until elections due next year. Mr. Yar Adwa died late Wednesday in the capital Abuja. Thousands attended the funeral in his hometown in Kasina. Nigeria has declared seven days mourning. Mr. Yonatan took the oath of the office in front of government ministers and other officials in Abuja almost 12 hours after Mr. Yaradua died. The ceremony was performed by Chief Justice Eloshus Katsina Alu. Afterwards, he made a brief address saying that administration was committed to pursuing electoral reform and the fight against corruption with greater vigor. While this is a major burden on me and indeed on entire nation, we must in the midst of such great adversity continue to gain our collective efforts towards upholding the values which our departed leader represented, Mr. Nathan continued. Zimbabwe leaders unite over sanctions. Zimbabwe's three leading figures have condemned international sanctions on the country at a World Economic Forum conference in Tanzania. In a rash show of unity, President Robert Mugabe, Prime Minister Morgan Zavanagari, and his deputy Arthur Mutambara appealed for investment. Only Mr. Zavanagari had been expected to represent Zimbabwe at the forum in Dar es Salaam. But President Mugabe and Mutambara made a surprise appearance. Despite the history of conflict, the three men put on a civil front, though Mr. Mutambara did not resist a rather barred reference to having gone to a previous World Economic Forum from a prison cell. U.S. markets plunge on continuing Greek debt concerns. 
U.S. stock markets have plunged in New York as concerns about a high level of European government debt continue to shake investor confidence. Stocks fell steeply on fears of Greece's debt problems which spread and halt the global economic recovery. At one point, Dow Jones was down by more than 9%, its worst fall since 1987 before starting to recover. By 1510 in New York, the Dow Jones was down by 3.04%, the S&P down by 3.05% and NASDAQ by 2.78%. As well as shares falling, bond prices increased and the dollar fell by 6% against the yen. There are fears that banks which are still recovering from the 2008 global banking crisis are exposed to Greek debt. BP sends giant box to contain Gulf of Mexico oil spill. A ship carrying a giant metal containment box has arrived at the site where a sunken oil rig has been leaking oil into the Gulf of Mexico. Oil giant BP says it hopes a 90-ton device will help to contain the oil. The U.S. is to carry a controlled burn of some of the leaked oil. But the oil reached a beach for the first time on Thursday, officials confirmed. The spill was set off by an explosion that destroyed the deep water horizon rig of Louisiana last month. Eleven rig workers died in the explosion and the ensuing oil leak has since been threatening several southern U.S. states. Coast Guard Petty Officer Connie Terrell said teams from Operation Unified Command in Robert, Louisiana had confirmed oil on the beach at the south end of Chandelier Islands at Framerson Island. This is the first confirmation that Unified Command has received of oil on a shoreline, Ms. Terrell said. It is largely just sheen. There is no evidence of medium or heavy oil, she continued. Burma's NLD, Democracy Party, faces dissolution. The pro-democracy party of Burmese opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi is to disband when a registration deadline for elections expires at midnight. The National League for Democracy NLD, is boycotting the polls because it says the laws under which they will be held are unfair. Burma's military leaders say any existing party that fails to re-register must disband. The NLD overwhelmingly won elections in 1990 but was never allowed to govern. The forthcoming polls, for which no date has been set, will be Burma's first in 20 years. International observers have roundly criticized the newly enacted election laws and critics say the military will use the election to strengthen its grip on power. Senior NLD leader and co-founder Wintin told that the mood at NLD headquarters in Rangoon was sad but defined. Divisions emerge over Thai Prime Minister's election roadmap. The Thai government has suggested that a parliament could be dissolved in September in line with its offer of holding elections two months later. However, red shirt protesters say this is not the firm date they need before they will disband their protest camp. Yellow shirt leaders also dispute the government's roadmap and say the Prime Minister should resign if he cannot enforce the law against the red shirts. The government insists its November election bid is non-negotiable. Reports say hopes that the current crisis might be coming to an end soon are fading. Just when it seemed that a deal to bring two months of bitter and bloody standoff to an end could be possible, Thailand's deep divisions are resurfacing, the media says. Syphilis cases rise sharply in China. China has seen a dramatic rise in cases of syphilis as a result of rapid social change, U.S. researchers say. A report in New England Journal of Medicine says syphilis is now the most commonly reported communicable disease in Shanghai, the second largest city of the world. Pregnant women are also increasingly passing diseases to their children with more than one baby with congenital syphilis born every hour in 2008. 